Hi everybody, it's Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art, and I'm just going to do a quick garden update, in my indoor garden that is, for the winter in 2016. It's January 24th, 2016, and I'm going to just plant a couple more things for the kitchen, really. <clears throat> I went to the Dollar Tree store, and I got for a dollar, and these are really cool because they have the little gripper dots on them and for a dollar that's great I buy a few of these and look at that for February all right and then they had seeds in forget-me-nots I hate when I accidentally forget to get some zinnias so I picked up a zinnia and what I'm gonna work with today the basil so I'll show you how everything looks from last time with my paper whites and my um, garlic that I put in but for right now I'm just going to load up these six packs so that I can put a little bit of basil into the light rack and even if it doesn't fully grow <clears throat> which it's not too early you can actually um, keep basil over the winter and I didn't this year every year is different sometimes I'm really great with things and I have a, a good harvest and I am on time with getting everything in and other years <clears throat> it's just not going to happen or there was something that didn't fruit really well and we're just not going to have as much as we did the year before. Drought, rain, this is nature so I do what I can but I'm not that green of a thumb to tell you the truth. I just don't give up on things too easily and um nature and the season and what bugs are around for that year and what the rodents are doing all so many millions of things factor into what grows well from one year to the next and uh, as a gardener it's a constant chase I've never had a year where I said ah job well done everything perfect no need to work to strive to get better I'm there just like the arts I find that gardening is an art <clears throat> and how you paint the palette uh, which you set up in your palette for colors sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but it's a constant journey ever changing never the same and no guarantees so I'm just making sure that I have again some of these have a little bit too much I have my newspaper laid down again I'm using an old pot get the water out of, I mean the soil out of my big bucket. And basil seeds are really small. Now I'll leave these, I'm going to press it down just a little bit. And again this soil is really dry so I will actually um, use the bath method. I don't even know if that's what it's called but when you put the water underneath and let it just slowly wick up rather than disturbing my seeds. So you won't see me watering <clears throat> overhead at this point in the game. Alright, so I'm going to take my basil and the point of this is that I will get some basils that we can pick from over the winter and we can add them to our salads. I definitely make a very large batch of pesto right at the end of the season in the fall. I take all my basil in and I will crush it and you put it in a pet pencil or I put it in a KitchenAid or something that I can grind, grind, grind it up until I get all the oils out and the leaves are all mushy and then you slowly add um, olive oil and pine nuts and you make pesto to put in your spaghetti sauces and again these seeds are really small Okay, so I'm just going to put a couple and try to make it so that they're not right on top of each other. And then <clears throat> I, sh I sort of put, a, you know, patty cakes there, my pesto, into little blobs that I flatten down, put them in the freezer, and then vacuum seal them and return them to the freezer. And anytime I make sauces or lots of different things that you can make with pastas and stuff where you would want pesto mixed in, I can just go to the freezer, take out one little patch, and add it. 
In this case, I'm hoping to have a little taste of fresh basil with tomatoes early in the season. And if these do well, and I don't use all of them, then I can put those plants outside. Because as I said, you can grow them all year in the house. All right, so now I'm just going to sprinkle because they're very small. They just need a little bit of dirt on the top. <clears throat> and then, normally sphagnum moss, okay? I do not have luck with just putting seeds in. They pop open, they get going, everything's great, and then they get whatever that fungus or I'm not even sure what the name, maybe you could leave a comment below if you know what the name of it is, that they get at the, the base of the plant right near the dirt. And it's a wilt disease and they just tip over and they all die. And it's very sad when you've put all the time into planting. So usually it's sphagnum moss. I have to go get some. So for now, I'm going to try what they're calling this decorator moss natural wooden sheet. I don't like to use these kinds of things because they strip the earth, but I'm very sparing um, in what I do use these things for. And the point is that this, if it is sphagnum moss, which it looks like it, it looks like sphagnum moss to me, and they're calling it decorative moss or decorator moss. So I think it's actually sphagnum moss. Uh, one little bag will last me a few years because as you can see, I'm just tearing it and crushing it and putting a light layer of it on top of the dirt and it, it, it inhibits the growth of this wilting thing that happens with your baby plants and it's not perfect some of it still happens but I just have found that this was always one of the best tips I ever got as far as starting seeds if you cover a light coating right when you plant them so when they come up there's something in sphagnum moss which by the way gloves are a pain in the neck but I definitely am using the gloves while I'm doing this because there's something in sphagnum moss I don't know if it's antibiotic-ish again if anybody knows they can leave some comments down below but it deters funguses and stuff so I am gonna try to get my basil past the danger point where they tend to wilt right when you get all excited that they're coming up. Put some of this here. It also helps when you're watering to keep splash down, etc, etc. And like I said, I'm using so small amounts here that one bag lasts me for a long time. I try not to buy anything that is loaded with sphagnum moss in the summer for outside and a, a lot of products are. But as as far as I know, they are stripping whole sections of, um, <clears throat> is it tropical area? Not sure. I just know it's not overall good for the planet. It's taking a natural resource and it's just scraping it off. And uh, as far as I know, it took a long time to have nature make it in the first place. Okay, so that is ready. And then I have these labels that I buy... I usually find sooner or later a good deal, whether it's the beginning or the end of the season. I think I got a hundred for just a couple bucks. They're seemingly plastic, nice size. And so I think it was Walmart that I purchased these. And I have already written basil at the top of one of them. I won't put it on everything because right now I'm keeping the little packs and corners. If I separate them, I will need to put another one in here so I can keep track of what I'm growing. You always think you're going to be able to remember everything, but uh, all said and done, that's not an easy task. Okay, I'm going to bring this over to the light rack and show you what's up with the garlic and the paper whites that I put in last time. Okay, so here we are at the light rack and here is the basil um, and the garlic and well I'll start with the garlic from last time it's grown quite a bit it's reaching up toward the lights in the light rack and there's the paper whites which were planted too late and the cyclamen 
on either end that are bringing a little bit of color. And I'll go over here and take a quick peek at the other, the other one. And down below the poinsettia is doing very well, so it's helping to add some color. And the geranium is growing so tall that I'm becoming concerned it's going to actually touch the light. But I'm very happy that the garlic is moving forward. I might be able to snip a little piece and add it to some cooking in about a week or so. The paper whites will be flowering fairly quickly. And now I have added some basil. And I'm looking forward to including that in some future recipes. So hope you enjoyed this and it maybe inspired you to plant a little something in your kitchen as far as herbs and things go. And uh, I'll see you next time with what I add in the future. We're just coming into the time period where I'm going to be making my decisions about what seeds I will be starting indoors. Till next time, everybody, this is Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. God bless.